So this is the Valentine's Day 2023 uh, instance of the Access VBA workshop of the Brookdale Computer User Group. And this is John Berrien. Hi. OK, let me start with uh, reasons that we should normalize our databases. And I'm going to show you a couple uh, that are not uh, to start it off with. Anyway, uh, this is a this is actually a sample I got out of a book. Uh, I have a couple of access books, and of course it had a section on normalization, and uh, and they had this table uh, to show pretty much what not to do with the table in a database. Um, the, uh, there, there's a number of uh, reasons you want to normalize a database. Uh, the first one is to minimize um, a duplicate rows. And uh, we don't have any duplicate rows in this table, but we have duplicate data. Uh, this, you know, we've got this, uh, this first order uh, by Susan Anderson, who lives here, uh, bought three things, and then came back later and bought a couple other things, et cetera. We have duplicate data. The, the address is duplicated. Of course, the name is duplicated. The uh, things purchased, some of them are duplicated. So we, we have duplicate data in this. And well, the phone, her phone number is duplicated too. You don't want duplicate data. Um, also, you want to normalize to prevent database uh, modification issues. Uh, for instance, if we were to, uh, well, if we were to add a, uh, want to add another product into our records, we can't do that without having an order because there's no way to put it in. Uh, you, you know, I could put something here, but it's not on an order. So it wouldn't be properly recorded. And, uh, and if I wanted to delete, let's say this one, I'm, well, let's take Susan again. I'm deleting these three items and they're, they're not in there anymore. Well, actually, it's only the monkey wrench, but you get what I mean. Uh, and the other problem is, if you wanted to know how many hammers were bought over whatever period, you wouldn't be able to write a query to do that with this design, because it has the quantity and the description and another quantity description and another, another, all together. And there's really no simple way to separate those to get a total. So let me, let me go back a little bit and talk a bit about tables. Um, I think you all know what a table is, uh, but the normal forms have special requirements for tables. I keep getting emails. That's the noise. Uh, one of the first is each table is a description of only one subject. Now, this table actually has three subjects. It has the order. It has the customer information. And then it has the items purchased. That's really three different subjects, and they shouldn't all be in one table. Um, they have no duplicate rows, which we already mentioned. And each column should be a fact for the subject of the table. And of course, these these are facts, but they don't all address the subject of the table, who, which is orders. 
So this table doesn't meet uh, the normal forms. I have another example, and I've seen I've never seen anybody do this here with commas between two things, but I have seen this. I'm open. The first normal form requires that things be what's called atomized. Now, what atomized means is you don't have something like the address with the street address, the city, the state, the zip code, all in one column. This should be broken up into four columns. And the reason to do that is that you could do a query on the zip code to get all your customers in a certain zip code. You could do a query on the state to get all your customers in the state. You could do um, a, uh, well, I guess that's uh, pretty clear. The, the other, the name, we have both first and last name here. A lot of times, at least when I do reports, I usually do them by last name. I sort by last name. Uh, it just reads better. Uh, you don't do first last. So those should be separated. Now, this situation is called repeating. Uh, let, me, let me get the right words here. I have some notes. It's called repeat, repeating groups. Here we have an item in one column, the quantity purchase and the price. So we have three columns for each item. And if we, and then item two is another three and item three, if we could go over is another three. And the major problem of this is, what if they want five items? You'd have to add more columns. So this does not work at all. Uh, so you need to or, uh, normalize the table to get rid of these repeating columns. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so the other thing that each, uh, each um, table needs is a primary key. And here is the primary key, which is order ID. Uh, this this is a uh, an auto number uh, primary key. If you add a new new uh, row, let's put a date in. Let's see how to it gives you the next number. So it automatically creates a new defining key for each row. Um, and the, the, it's, the primary keys cannot duplicate. They, they have to be unique. Everyone has to be unique. There can't be any blanks. And, uh, but there isn't, well, I'll come back to that later. Uh, I always use the uh, auto number key. Uh, let me show you what that looks like by going to design view. I think everyone else here knows what this is, but it, it this little uh, uh, key symbol shows it's the primary key. So does this over here. And it's an auto number. It's a data type is long integer. It increments by one for each new row. And it's indexed, and it could be no duplicates. And that is uh, a good key. There, you can have keys that aren't auto number keys, and I'll show you that later. But uh, those you have to be careful with because things like people use things like uh, a product code or an SKU number, but they have to be unique. And uh, 
I'm not sure how you would how you would actually do that without getting a repeat. Uh, so that had to be careful. I, I like the the uh, auto number key. I don't think you can go wrong with that. Okay. So let's go and talk about the normal forms. And I'm going to get. I'm not going to go work with this one. I'm going to close that. We're going to work with. this table. The first normal forms, as I said before, requires each column to be a separate fact about whatever we're talking about. So you, in order to be in first normal form, customer name would have to be in two columns, first name, last name. Address would have to be in four, street, address, city, state zip customer phone is already that way and couldn't have this at all uh, that just doesn't work um, so let's start working on putting this in first normal form uh, the first thing we we should do is separate separate the customer from the order because as I said before, we have three subjects here and we want to separate them into three separate tables. So we'll start with the customers. So I'm going to make a copy of this form. Oh, that's the wrong place. I had to close it, make a copy. Copy. Paste. And I'm going to rename it as customers and we're copying the table structure and the data in it so when you op open the table customer it's on the top it looks just the same but what we're going to do here is we're going to get rid of all the things that aren't the customer and the things that aren't the customer are the order ID, the order date, and all these item and quantity and price things. We just want these three columns. So I'm gonna go to design view, and I'm gonna start deleting things we shouldn't have. And I'm gonna delete rows. This is a little bit of a pain. Uh, so can you multi-select? I don't know. I tried that. I don't think I can. Let's see. Oh, I can. You know, I tried it. It didn't work before. Thank you, John. So now we have... I have to save it. Now we have this. We got rid of the rest. Now... What we need to do is separate first and last name and the four address fields. Go back to design view. And uh, before we do anything else, I'm gonna add a, insert a row and add a primary key, which would be, yeah, come on, custom. And I'm gonna make it a, Oh no, it's got to be an auto number field. I see auto numbers start off with increment, but they say duplicates okay. But if we create change it to a primary key, it changed to no duplicates, which is what a primary key needs to be. You can't have duplicates. Okay. Customer name, I'm going to change that to first name. And I'm going to add another field, which is last name. And I'm going to leave the address there. And I'm going to let's see if I can 
insert more than one. I guess that doesn't work. City. State. Oops. And Okay, now normally I would, you know, zip code should be five, five uh, columns, but, uh, and the city state address should be the right size. I won't bother with that for this, but let's look at it in data shape view now. Now, the, what we need to do is move the last name to the last name. And then we'll put Kent. Can you do this automatically? Not that I know of. Well, can you write, I mean, you have a table. Can you I, write a, a SQL statement that just splits them? Uh, I, I don't know that, but I already I already took care of that, John. Uh, I, this is just an example. Was it 98109? Okay. Okay, and then we'll do the rest, but I didn't do it that way. I created, I already created a table. And this is what the finished table looks like. So this customers, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete that. Yeah, forget it. Just close it and leave it. Okay, so, so now we have a table that all of the data here depends upon the subject and the each row depends on its own primary key. So we only have, uh, we have five, five records. By the way, we had six before. Where is it? We had six before because Susan Anderson was on two orders. But when I created the table, I deleted the duplicates. I forgot to mention that. Uh, so uh, anyway, each each row is unique. Okay, there's only one of each. So so this meets uh, first normal form because everything has been atomized. And there are no duplicates. Um, of course, this address is a duplicate because it's two married people. Uh, but other than that, there's no duplicates. So that's the first thing. There we go. Okay, let's go back to this table. Now, we need to take out what we don't have in here anymore. Let's delete these three columns. We have to do that in design view. We're going to do it here. Okay, we'll leave the rest in here. We'll save it and data sheet view. So now we have now we're down to two subjects: the products, the items, and the order. And uh, what we want to do here is we need to add a foreign key. To, to connect the um, the customer to the to the order. So let's go back to design view and we'll add a 
foreign key that says it is. And it's a number. And it needs to be the, the same type as the primary key for the customer table. Let's see. The primary key type. I'm sorry, not data type. Uh, is long integer, field size. I didn't mean type. Okay. So it needs to be long integer, but duplicates are okay here because the same person can have many orders. So uh, now let's look at this. And now we have the customer ID column in, but we need to populate this with the customer IDs from the customer table. We need to transfer these numbers to this column in the order table so that we can link the two tables together. Because at the end of the day, we want to reconnect all this data the way it was so that each order has a customer, each item on each order is there, and uh, so we, we got the put the three things back together. It's like it's what I'm saying. So in order to do this, we need to do an update query. And uh, so I'm going to create a query. And I'm going to put customers and orders. And Let's see, we got it right. No, we don't. We can't hook the customer ID together because that's there's none on the orders table. No, I'm supposed to delete that. What we need to do, the matching thing is the phone in the two. Where's the phone? Oh crap, I took the phone numbers out. Yeah, you did. You took every. All yeah, of the facts. yeah, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. All right, close. Let's see. All right, I need to put the phone number back in. Okay, and it's a, uh, no, it's a text. Okay, so I'm going to put the phone number back in. Let me go here, data sheet view. All right. Sorry, guys. No, this is good. Hey, look. Okay. This yeah. All right, Anderson is this. Copy that. Well, you have another query, right? Now you have another table, a different table. I could I could do that. Yeah. You could just take the order ID and copy the phone in. And then you do another query. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. Let's do that. Let's do that. More practice. Okay. And yeah. All right. So let's do that every single time. I forget to close that. Okay. We put those together. And and by the way, if you want to know what this does, you can look at this. And it says it includes the rows where the joined fields from both tables are equal, which is exactly what we want. And it's there's the two tables, and here's the two columns that are being connected. Okay, 
So what we want to do is, uh, let's see, I'm going to make sure we get the right one. I want to put, wait a minute. I think. Yeah. What are I doing? Since, since you have all the tables here, which may not be normal, you can just populate the uh, uh, the the final table with one query. You don't have to do two queries. I suppose so, John. But let me let me do it the way I know. And in order, what we need to do, see, this would show. Well, it's not going to show anything because there's no. Uh, no, it's, it is. What am I saying? This would show all rows. That nah, doesn't because there's no there's no customer phone there. All right, well, let's go back here. Let's change it to an update table, and we're going to use the order ID and table one orders. Exclamation point, customer ID, order ID. And here we're going to update to, this is the update to line. We're going to update the customer phone to table one orders. Exclamation point, customer phone. And that should do it. Let's let's run it. Okay, it updated six rows. All right, there's the phone number. It doesn't have the uh, the mask on it, so you don't see the parentheses and the and the uh, other. But we're good. Okay, let's delete this. Well, now let's delete this query. You won't save it. Let's close. All right. Nice and easy. Close. No. Okay. All right. Let's start over. Now that we have the phone number there. Okay. Create. Query. This time we want customers. Table two. Close. And now we have customer phone in both of them. And we're going to delete this join. And we're going to join customer phones. OK. OK. And now we want to put the customer ID into the customer ID field in the orders. So we're going to go from, we're going to have, let's see, customer ID. And let me think. And phone. I think I'm doing it the wrong. Let me just delete that. That's wrong. No, I don't want to do that. Okay, John, help me out. I'm confused here. You wanted to take the I want to go customer from, phone from table two orders to find the customer name. No, customer ID. You're going from table gonna, two. No, I'm going to table one. The I want to put the customer ID into customer ID on two. So yes, I want customer ID on two, where customer phone matches customer. Hey John. Yeah. John Varian, what you might what you might do is change that to an update query now. Yeah, that's because what I'm doing right here. now. You just have a select. 
can right. change it to update it. There you go. Yeah. And so we want to go where the customer phone matches the customer phone. This is the customer phone on the table two orders where it matches customers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Customer phone. Okay. Let's let's make that bigger. Yeah. Okay. And we want to update the customer ID and table orders to customers. customer ID. Okay, let's try that. Now, let's see if table two orders. There we go. There we go. And let's see. Now, customer ID one, if we go here, is Virginia Potter, and she had two orders. And sure enough, there's two orders here. Okay. So this is now correct. So, so now we can link together the table two orders with the table three customers. What happened to customer ID three? Who are they? Did they ever exist? Uh, don't tell me this happened wrong. Harold Potter. Yeah, he did buy something. But you have a customer ID six. And in your customer's table. Yeah, you know why that happened? Okay. We did it wrong. We did the query wrong. It shouldn't be this one. It should be table three customers. This one. Okay, let's go back to the query and let's do that again. Let's add, this is good practice. Well, delete the data from your, from uh, your yeah. end table. It, yeah. It'll just update it. Uh, yeah, today, this is still right, but this is not. We want customer. Oh, uh, wait. This says update to. Oh, uh, wrong criteria. Yeah, that's right. You're going to update the table two orders. Right. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. And we're. And the thing is, you got a misspelling in the update to field uh, yeah i see that customer oh yeah look at that oh, oh. yeah look at that <laughs> well anyway it's going to work because yeah. we have to leave this there we have to leave that there I'll fix that when we uh, go back to the tables. So let's run that. All right, now let's look at it. 
and there's your three. Four began three. And uh, you know, seven is a uh, there's nothing there, right? I'm gonna delete that. Okay. Yeah, let's fix this. Okay. The query doesn't matter anymore, so we get rid of that. Okay, so so we've gotten to the point where we can connect together the, uh, let's get rid of this too. We can connect together the table one and table two. And uh, we might as well do that now. I was gonna talk about relationships later, but let's do that now. I don't think we have to save anything. One, two. Let's just close all. Okay. Let's create a relationship between uh, table three, and table two, close. Okay, now we're gonna relate between customer ID to customer ID. Okay. Now I could, I could just hit create here, it's gonna draw a line, but we, we wanna go beyond that because we want to make sure that nobody can screw this up. And that's why we have to, it's hard to point on that and get it right. We always want to do this because what that does is assure that the, there's no leftover or, or orphan records in the orders table if we were to delete a customer, that's what referential integrity does. It assures that you cannot delete a, uh, a customer if there are uh, records in joint tables. Right. Now, yeah, that's because if you have an invoice, you don't know. You don't know who you don't owns, know, right. You don't know who did it. Money. You, so this always check that. Now, interesting thing, you don't have to check this for auto numbers because auto numbers can't be updated. You can't go into a table and change the auto number primary key. It just won't happen. And uh, in fact, I can show you that. So we don't have to do this, but I always do it anyway. And this, if you don't check this and you do try to delete a customer, it'll give you an error. It won't let you do it because you have, uh, a, you have attached um, tables. Let, let, let's leave that off for now. Okay. And, and by the way, when you set referential integrity, it always gives you these neat little one-to-many symbols because this is a one-to-many uh, relationship. You could have one customer and many orders. So let's save this and close it. And, and let's look at table customers. And let's see if we can delete Virginia Potter. I'm going to be daring. I have to do it over here. Delete record. Record cannot be deleted or changed because table two orders concludes related records. So that you cannot delete that until you get rid of the related records in table two. That has to happen first. Um, so you can delete it once that happens. So you don't have to have one, two, three, four, five forever. Uh, you know, if a, a uh, if a customer never ordered anything, you could 
delete them uh, or if for some reason you deleted all their orders you could then delete them uh, so okay but you can you can on the other hand let's go to table 10 you can delete a row out of here and I'm not going to do it but you could do that uh, and then that uh, that person who happens to be number two it must be that Susan Anderson uh, she would only have one order but you can do that uh, that's just but, deleting an order that's not deleting a customer this doesn't delete the customer it deletes the order you know, maybe the maybe the she called up and canceled the order, so you just delete it. Now maybe you don't in the real world, but you could delete it. Or you could change the order. Yeah, yeah, yeah you could change it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's close the customers. Now let's see what's next. Okay. Now we're we're going to make a new table. So let's close this one, and I'm going to make a new new table. I'm going to create table, and I'm going to call this. Well, I'm going to put fields in it first. Oh, I got the caps lock up. Right. And this is going to be a foreign key from the orders table. So it's going to be a number. And it's long integer, duplicates okay. Foreign keys are okay with that. Then I'm going to put another one as item id and that's also a number and all the integer and let's see then i need actually i'm going to call this order right to better define it. Which is another number. And text. Now these these three fields, these three uh, well uh, columns. Let, let's look at. Let's save it. Oh, uh, okay. I'm not going to have a primary key, and I'll explain that in a minute. All right, we have these three are, remember we had on table two orders, we have these three columns, item, quantity, price. Those are gonna be populated with this these data over here and here. Quantity, product, price, different sequence, same thing. This is this pair, this pair of columns is going to be our primary key. We're going to have a compound key for this. Uh, this is the foreign key from the orders table. And this one 
is a, actually a counter for the number of items on each order. But between the two of them, they'll be we'll be able to separate each product and its quantity and its price in each row. And in order to do that, we had to go back here and order one, order one, item one was, let's see, five hammer. And the price is, I think, four ninety nine. And now the, the next item, still item one, but this is item two, and that was three screwdrivers at a dollar and a quarter. Three. Okay, and the next one's item one, uh, order one, item three. Uh, monkey wrench, six monkey wrenches at And this is a pain in the butt, as you can see. But you can do that with a query also. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because those. I don't think so. You just need an if. Well, OK, John, you're better at queries than I am. But we're not going to spend any time doing any more on this because I already did it. And here it is right here. All right, I already filled in the table. So the first three, the first order had three items on it, one, two, and three. So its order number is in here three times. The second order had one item, a hammer. And the third item, third order had two items, one and two, and had these two items. And then fourth item, fifth and sixth, they only had one item each. So, so now we have another table that we could actually join to the orders table. So why don't we do that just for the heck of it and see what we got. Let's do the this one. Okay. And we have order ID to order ID. And I'm going to do this. Okay. Oh, I forgot that. Let's do that again. Okay. That'll teach me to leave the tables open. Okay, and now we have another one to many join. So for each order, we can have many items. Many items. Okay, 
Let's save that. We're getting there. Now, let, let's let's look at this table a little bit. Remember, I said uh, each row has a unique primary key, and that these two rows are the primary key for this table, even though there isn't a quote auto number primary key. But these two rows, this is the this is the foreign key from the order. And this is just a counter of the number of items on the order. We're actually going to get rid of this later on. And, and every every combination of the two is unique. If you look down them all, they're they're all unique, and they will never repeat because the order number keeps growing, and each item number, no matter how many items on the order, is unique. So this will always be unique, and and won't won't ever repeat, which I guess is the, saying the same thing. And so each row, each row, is dependent on the primary key, which is two columns, right? The quantity is the quantity on this order for this item. The product is the product for the for the in this combination. And the price is the price for this combination. And if you go down, it's the same thing for all of them. So everything, all of the data items here, all these three columns are dependent upon this uh, compound primary key. Now, let's go. To, so this this table, and in fact, the other two tables. Well, okay, the the customers table uh, meet both normal form one, which is atomization, and normal form two, which is everything has to be dependent upon or a, a, a subject, part of the subject for each row, or each primary key. Now we got a normal form three. And normal form three says something different. And it took me a while to, to understand it because um, Let's see. Now you get the third number. I'm going to read this. It says a table is in third normal form if it is already in first and second normal form, which this is, and that not only every non-key column, the these are the non-key columns. be dependent upon the entire, in this case, two columns, primary key, but that non-key columns can be independent of each other. Now, what the heck does that mean, that these are independent of each other? Well, what it means that each non-key column must be dependent on the primary key and nothing but the primary key. Now, let's look at these three columns. Is the quantity dependent upon the order and the item? It is. And that's true here. And that's true here. Now, the monkey wrench is also dependent upon, and all these other things are dependent upon the two. But how about the price? What if the, monkey, the, the product description column wasn't here? Would the price be dependent upon the item and the order? No, it's dependent upon the product. So this is a, a uh, an, it's not in, this column is not independent of any other column. It's dependent upon this one. 
that, that makes sense? Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. So this doesn't meet third normal form. So what we're going to do, we're going to make another table and, and we're going to take and put these two things in another table. Okay. And I already did that. And where is it? I guess I did. I didn't do that. What am I saying? You know, I made all these notes to make sure I do this in the right order, and I'm not doing it anyway. <laughs> I guess that's typical. Okay. Okay. So let me make sure I save it. Close. All right. I'm going to make a copy of this table. And paste. And I'm going to name this the products table. All right, let's let's open that. Now, of course, it looks exactly the same as we had for the order items, but we're going to uh, we're going to get rid of some things here. Oops. No, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the order ID. I'm going to get rid of the quantity. Okay. And now let's look at, oops, let's look at what we got. Okay. Now what we want is everything to be unique in here. So we're going to get rid of the, uh, the hammer because it's two hammers. So we'll delete that record. And there's two screwdrivers. So we'll delete this one. Okay. Now every row is unique, right? So let's go back to design view and let's insert a primary key. Well, And it's, I'm going to make it an auto number. And I'm going to make it the primary key. So now we have an auto number, long integer, no duplicates, incremented, primary key. Now when we look at it, now we have the primary key, product description, the price, now the price is and the uh, and the and the uh, product go together, right? Mm -hmm. They're not. They're both dependent on the primary key. So now, if we go back to order, yeah, it's this one. Let me see. Let me see. Let me look at my notes. Okay. Let me close this. I'm going to make a new one here. I copy, paste. I'm not absolutely sure I had to do that, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, now I have an order details just to follow my notes. 
which looks exactly the same as the order items, as you can see. Okay. Close that. Now, we don't need the product description and price here anymore. So we're going to delete those two. Are you going to do a query first to do the update based uh, on product oh, description? Yes. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely right, John. I'm glad you're here. Yes, we need to add a type a a, a, a a column. What we're going to do, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to delete this because we don't need the I really need the that and I'm going to put put in there okay this is going to be a foreign key from the product cable table so let's go to uh sheet now we, we want to put the product ID in here. So we got to do another query and uh, help me when I do it wrong. Why did you get rid of order item? You don't need it. You don't need it. And uh, okay, the, let's see. Yeah. Uh, this really this really was here sort of as a uh i just say placeholder but you know a lot of times on an order it'll be item one item two item three etc you know it'll actually print out that way on your on your receipt or your invoice but that's not necessary because the item id does it doesn't refer to any tables what you really want is the product ID, which refers to the products and the price. And that, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to we're going to put the we put the product ID in here, and now we have a uh, uh, we still have we will still have a compound a comp we'll have a compound key uh of these two and and of course the product id is actually related to actual data whereas the the item id really wasn't uh, you would you know if someone was doing an order manually they would have had to type that in as a, a one two three and then you would be typing in the quantity the product description and the price and over and over and duplicating it and all that stuff so we're going to get rid of all that except for the quantity. So uh, let's see, let's close this. Okay. Let me just put that there. All right. So we rewind to our table and we want products. Now we want more details. And we are going to put those together. Do that every time. Wait. We are going to we are going to join the product description. I guess we could join the price too. But... No, they, they they may be things with the same price. Yeah, that's true. I'm sorry, that, I didn't think of that. And of course, we want it to be rows where the join fields are equal, which we know they're going to be equal. So okay. All right. So let's see. We want to put you want to put into product ID and product description. And make it an update. And we want to put the criteria. No, the criteria goes here where table products 
products. Oops. Product description. So the we want the, with the product description and the deep the order details matches the product description in the products table. We want to update the product ID in the table order details to table products. Ah. Practice uh, product ID. Everybody like that? Okay. Yep, that works. Okay, let's see what we got. There it is. Okay, so now we had the have a uh, you know have this is our compound uh, key. And we don't need the product description anymore or the price because we have the product ID here. So we can link this to the products table. So let's go and delete those. We don't need those. Okay. So now our order details table only shows the quantity. That's the only thing that is actually unique to an order and a product for each line on the order. So now let's close this and I'll close this and not save it. And I'm gonna go here and let's join the products table. Oh, wait a minute. Products. You know, I've been doing this for years and every time I do it, I forget to close that, that little window. And you know what? We got the wrong table here. We need to have the order details. Remember that time. Order ID, next to order ID. Product ID connects to product. Come on. And now we have we have the customer table, an orders table, and a product table. These are the three subjects that we started out with that now we have broken out. And uh, this, how did you get it to go one to many in that direction? Was it because of it's so because this this is a primary key and this is a foreign key. So it knew to do that because that was a product a primary yeah, key. I don't um yes. Well for the way you dragged it. I'm sorry. I think also the way you dragged it, you dragged from uh, no, that's, I don't. Yeah, that's I don't why think, I asked. I don't because... think so. I don't think so. Yeah, let's. Uh, come on. Delete. Okay, let's drag it this way. All right. Let's see what happens. Nope. It's because 
this is a primary key and this is not. That's a foreign key. It's, it's, I guess that's the way access works. Let's put it that way. Now we could, we could, well, let's, we got to do another thing here. We still have the, all this crap in here. Did I make it? No, I didn't. So let's save this. Close it. And let's go here. We need to delete all of this. Okay. And a customer phone. So let's do that. Side view. I'm going to delete that. That was my screw up. And now we're going to, uh, we're going to shift click on your last one. Uh, I'm sorry. Try so, shift click on your last one. On the I'm, last I'm doing yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. And now we're now we're done with those. So now the orders really only has three fields. If a uh, an order ID, which is a primary key, a foreign key from the customer table, and the date. That's the only thing on the order. Now, of course, in the real world, it's probably other things, but we're going to ignore that. Okay, so I think I saved it. The order and the customer. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now we have. Yeah, and you can see it. All of that's gone. All that's gone. Now, there's another interesting thing here. Uh, there's actually we need, although we don't have to. We need another table because we have another, uh, what do you call that again? Another, it's yeah, a third normal form. Thermal, third normal form problem. Let's, uh, I think we saved this. Okay. Let's look at, we're working with this one. It's in this one. Does anyone know where it might be? Well, you gave it away. It's over at the bottom of the left column. The bottom of the left column? Yeah, you said there's a zip code table. Well, you weren't supposed to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Very, it's very interesting. I I I, uh, I read this, and at first I didn't believe it, but I've become convinced that it's true that the city and the state are dependent upon the zip code, mm, or vice versa. That no, the zip not... code is a function of the city and the state. Well, you know, I looked at. Uh, uh, initially, I had Brooklyn in here instead of Flushing. Brooklyn has 56 zip codes. So you would have Flush of Brooklyn, New York with any choice of 56 zip codes. So because the zip code actually identifies a portion of bigger cities. So really, the city no. and state depend on the zip code. So we don't need them. We can make another table, which you weren't supposed to peek. I should have named it something else. Hey, John, can I just say something about these zip codes? Yes. And, uh, John Stamphill probably knows this too. Anita and I live in Ocean Township, but we're served by the Asbury Park Post Office. So our zip code is the same as Asbury Park's zip code. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, and, and I've had other examples of that in other places I've lived. I, yeah, I have to change it all the time. What's that? I put in the zip code and it comes up Asbury Park and yeah. I change it to Ocean. I know, but I've got, I've got people mailing me things that I would like to be mailing it and say Ocean, but it says Asbury. Okay, and, and I've got charities 
you know, charities always send you uh, return labels when they ask for money. And the return labels always have Asbury Park on there. Uh, yeah. If you mail it to 07712, it'll get to our, our house, but maybe we don't want it to say. Yeah. Point. Yeah. You know, I, I looked at, I looked at, uh, went to a website, actually went to the post office website and they had information about zip codes. It was rather interesting reading. Uh, yeah, what I said before was incorrect. Yeah, the, yeah. the first three digits are related to, I think they call it a zone. I'm not, I'm not sure if that was right, but I, the first three digits depend upon, are, are like major mail sorting places. Oh. And it's the last two that identify a portion of like say Brooklyn. So the first three digits for Brooklyn are all the same. It's the last two that go from zero one to 56. Uh, I thought that was amazing. And it's, it's I guess it's, you know, it's sorted by machines. It's how the machines sort things out. And then I think the last four digits that I don't have here, you know, the dash and four digits. I think that is sort of almost represents the carrier or something like that. I'm not quite sure. I didn't get an explanation for that, but it, it's interesting. So, so let's, uh, let's add the zip code uh, table. Now, I think I, I think I did this. Didn't do it. Okay. Let's add, we need to change one thing here because I'm going to do a lookup. So let's go design view and the zip code. Let's make it a lookup. A combo box. And by the way, I never knew what to do with lookup until about two or three uh, sessions ago, two or three meetings ago. And that's how I learned how to do this. All right. Okay. So now that's correct. All right. Let's close that. And save that. Let's go here. So now, now this is a lookup. And uh, see, it shows all the zip codes that I that we have. So I could change the zip code. Uh, and that's another thing that, you know, somebody like a business was sending mail to many, many states and all over the place. There's a zip code uh, table available from the post office with the city, state, and zip code in it that you can use to do this instead of creating your own. But I didn't do that. So anyhow, uh, let's save that. I think I did. What was that? Now let's add. I didn't. I didn't do one thing. Let's go back here. Design view. And I'm going to be daring and replace and delete city and state. Save. And so now, now we're really shortened things up. Okay. So let's close this, go to relationships, and let's add table which is zip code, and I close it, I'm gonna put it over here, and I'm gonna put it over here, and I'm gonna attach zip code to zip code. Now, you know, this is interesting. The zip code is the primary uh, key but it's not an auto number. So if I were to change the zip code, 
I don't know why I would do that, but if I were, I'd want it to cascade update to all the customer's addresses. Okay. I think I'll click this too while I'm at it. Okay. So let's let's make a query. Actually, let's do something else. I have I have another table. Let's see. And uh, I'm going to close this. I'm going to go to this one. I actually intended intended to do all the uh, relationships here, but it fit better in, in the flow the way we did it. So let's add tables. This just has the actual tables, except there's one more. Uh, I'll explain that one. Let's show tables. Let's start with customers, orders, order detail, products, and zip code. Okay. And we did customer ID. Great. And we did order ID. Great. Now we did product ID. Great. And now the zip code. We did zip code to zip code. Okay. Now, anybody, I guess you noticed I have another table here. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I have another table. Now, let, let me just mention one thing. This, we, we know this, this is a one to many. There's many orders for one customer. Uh, this is a one to many. There's many customers for the same zip code. And here we have one to many. There's many, uh, one, one, well, what this says is one product can be on many order details. And many order detail, many orders can have, no, many order details can have the same order. Remember we had one, two, three items, right? This is a, this is called an intersect table. And what it, it represents a many to many relationship. Let me say it again. One order, one order can have many products. One product can be on many orders. And this is how we do that. Okay. By the way, you notice I, I also added to this table order price and current price. I'll explain what that means in a second. But before we do that, let's do this one. Right. Let's move everything over. Probably notice that I like to do do the uh, relationships as a step. I don't know. I just like that better. Now, what does this mean? Well, you can see there's a credit card number there. Some customers, you know, I you say you place an order and use a credit card. The uh, the uh, uh, the seller knows your credit card number. Uh, but some sellers want to save your credit card number. Uh, and some customers don't want that. They don't want it sitting on 
the uh, the vendor's database. So they only want certain vendors to have their credit card. So here we have a different kind of join. I'll show you what this does. Yeah, I think so. You really want to, if they delete the credit card, you really want to delete the customer? Is no. that what the bottom one, the bottom uh, checkbox? No, it's did? the other way. It's it's the other way. I don't think it would delete the customer. I'm not going to try that out right here because I don't want to screw anything up. But yeah, uh, I think it would be the other way. But here's the thing. There's of the I think we had five customers. Mm -hmm. OK, this this is the one to one join. All right. I had never done this before. I never I could never figure out why you would do that. Uh, but when I read about it, I could see some logic to it. There's there's other logic to it. Let's take the products. What if there were some products that had some special warning or special something that had to be included in its information but the other products don't have that so you would want to have another table with product id as its foreign key with whatever that information was instead of credit card number it might be whatever special warning uh, but only a few products few customers would have that and so over here, uh, I can't show it to you right now, but let's save this. Just like California, you can't, you'll have something like that for California. You can't order, if you're in this state from California, you can't ship it to California. That's what that would be for a product. Oh, there's really? got something in it that's cancerous and California doesn't allow it. <laughs> Everything that's is where cancerous you have in California. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So we had, here's our customers. There's five customers. Uh, here's this only customer one, three, and five, one, four, and five have their credit cards stored. Customer two and three didn't want to have their credit card stored. So that's what that one to one relationship gets you which as i say i had never done before isn't it more common that i mean like i use multiple credit cards with the same company it's not my customer id that they allow me to have multiple credit cards on amazon and ask me which one i want to use but this is just for your example tonight yes yeah, you could still have more than one credit card for that customer. You would just have another row. Yeah, but I would associate the credit card or the payment method with the particular order. Right, that's true. I mean, it gets much more complicated. Yeah, but that, yeah. With, with what you just showed us is how you build the database. Whatever right. you need to put in, you get to yeah. the third normal form. You got to get first, second, and third normal forms. Right, right. I, well, I just wanted to show something I never knew before as to why the heck you would ever have a one-to-one -one relationship. Because if you, I always thought you do that and just put all the data in the one table. Why would you have two? And and when I read about this, that made sense that you know there are some things that only apply to you know like some products. In this case, it's a credit card number. By the way, don't don't try and copy these numbers. They're uh, <laughs> never mind. Okay, let's make let's make a query. Let's make a query and let's put everything in. Uh, 
Who's for a detail products? You mean I create an invoice for one order? Well, wait, wait, uh, wait. Let's. Uh, I just want to show you something that uh, is interesting. Uh, and and I know you probably almost everybody knows this, but you know, there's there's only three records in here for three of the five customers. Now this, well, all of these joins, let me put it this way, all of these joins have only include rows where joint teams are both are equal. Now normally in a relationship, I don't know why you would do anything but that because the relationship is controlling where the foreign keys go. Okay, I don't know why you would include only part of the records you know, all from this, but where would be ones that aren't, you know, I don't know why you would do that. But here, uh, I can, John, I can tell you. Okay. If you show me a listing of all my customers, whether or not they placed an order. No, no, I don't mean that here. I mean in the relationships up here. I mean up here. Right. Up here, uh, you know, no, the I'm sorry, I, we were in the query. It does apply in the query. But here, I don't see the join type. I don't see anything but this. I don't see why you would have any of these in the join type in a relationship. But in a query is different because you might have missing records or or you don't have any records uh, there. So here we need to do just what you, you're saying. You know, we want all customers and only the records from secure where the joint fields are equal and the reason for that i'll show you because i'm not going to do that i'm going to leave it one to one so let's do let's uh let's do credit card if they only have if you'll only get the customers that have a credit card that's right that's right so i want you know everybody else to realize that uh let's put first and last name uh let's put i don't know order order number order date um quantity uh, let's see product description order price coin price let's see what that looks like let's see what that looks like okay as you said, Andy, that's you only get the three that had the credit card numbers. Right. The other three aren't here. So we have to choose other. We have to change this to choice number two. Now it's going to include all the customers, only records from the secure where they're equal. And now we will get everything, including all the blanks, because we didn't save her credit card again, and we didn't save his credit card. And this looks, this looks pretty much like where we started with, except that it's split out by product. You know, here's the first, uh, there's three rows for each, for the first order because those hammer screwdriver and monkey wrench. There's two orders for the the third order. These two, and everything else is one row. Now let me tell you why I did this. Any anybody got an idea? Why you did order prices? You could change the price. You change the price. The current price is today's price. Uh, a hammer was 399 back on the 18th. 
but now it's four ninety nine. And the hose was twenty five dollars on the nineteenth, but now it's twenty one. So that's why that's there, and that that in the that is that is not in the the current price is in the product description. Now let me think. No, yes, the the current price is with the product description. Let's do that. So on the new orders, okay. the order price is being populated by current price. Yes, which is going to take, I don't know how we would do it in a, in a query, but you know, I would do it with a couple lines of code. I mean, we, we're doing tables here. This isn't workable, at least to my knowledge, without forms uh to to do it you know i i would make a form sub form for each for each order to capture the individual lines uh or number of uh, well, number of items so here here's the current price and that goes with each item which gets updated as things go on sale or their prices go up or whatever and the uh let's see orders the order detail gets the order price the price when the order was placed for that product so that that's why i did that i just thought that would be of interest well, you can imagine that in real life, this is much more complicated. I mean, oh, imagine, yeah. a, imagine a supermarket. Prices change every week. Yes, yes. You know, yeah. and, and people order now online with DoorDash and whatever. Right. But, but this is how you build a database that's normalized right. with the yes. three normal forms. That's right. And uh, there's there's actually... What was that name that you mentioned in the beginning? Cod. Cod. Yeah, he has a normal form, and there's there's four and five normal forms, but I didn't find any place that explained those, and they all said that if you can do the first three, don't worry about the rest. Yeah, that's that's my. I've never heard of the fourth and fifth normal forms. Yeah. 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 It was, I've seen that. Anyway, so, so let me tell you something. I don't build a, a database like we started off with, with uh, <laughs> hopefully nobody does that. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to build a database that has this in it. Well, no, John, I, um, Sometimes you don't have a choice. If you're like in a former life, I was on the receiving end of a lot of uh, CSVs. Yes. That are great to suck into Excel, but it has a boatload of redundant data. Yes. So it's not a question of, you know, would you design it this way? Sometimes, you know, <laughs> when. You know, when life throws you lemons, you got to make lemonade. You're this right. The data You're that right. You got and you have to make right. sense of it. No, what I mean is when I make a database for myself, I would never do this. No. Now, I might put, uh, you know, city, state, zip together. Maybe not, but I might. Because that doesn't bother well, one, me too much. The one thing, I was just curious if you... If you try, that's your original, that's your original table, right? That's the one, that's that your table, starting point? That table came out of this two inch thick book I have called Access 97 Developer's Handbook. Okay, <laughs> fine. Now, did you, did you try to use the embedded data normalization tool in Access? No, I didn't, but I've read that in the book and it says it sort of works. Yeah, it's it's a starting point. 
that's my it's experience. That's my experience too, because we tried that with Peter's database, blood, blood bank database, and uh, just couldn't do it that way. Yeah. In fact, Andy, you had us doing it. You let you let me into doing it, and you probably remember it. It, it just. Oh yeah. It just didn't, it just didn't come out right. I, I have. I also have the experience over the years of developing databases for clients who would not, they would not accept, <laughs> they would not allow me to do it the right way. Yeah. I mean, no. they, because they were coming from some other program and they just couldn't get their, wrap their heads around doing it the right way. And I just had to, had to build something that satisfied them, but but that it wasn't really normalized. Are you guys analyzer in Access? What was that? Are you talking about the table analyzer in Access? That's what, well, that was the last subject they were talking about was the yeah, analyzer. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's what I'm referring to. Um, in this day and age, there's AI, and uh, I'm sure there's stuff out there that would normalize a Access database if it was all messed up or uh, any table any table that was all messed up um and i was surprised in excel we have what we call flash fill where if you want to clean up data you give it a pattern uh, like you want to separate the last name from the first name and it's very easy to do you just give it a couple examples of what you want it to do and then it takes over from that i don't see that in access in all these years since uh, since it's been around in Excel since I think 2013, I'm really disappointed in Microsoft. It's been around for a long time in Excel, even before 13, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're, they they're going to be they're going to be adding additional AI to Excel and Word, and uh, all of the Office products. Really, the the primary Office products, Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, but. Uh, Somebody will build that for access because P and they'll sell it. And it probably won't be Microsoft because Microsoft probably doesn't want to spend the time and uh, money on something that they don't think has much marketability for them. It's not going to make them money. Yeah. But as I just said, it's already been announced that Microsoft will be adding artificial intelligence to Edge, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, Power Automate. They're going to, people are going to push this everywhere. I mean, Bill Gates said it's the next thing, right? And so we're going to see it. And uh, I'd, I'd love to have it's too early to uh, think that somebody in the club could give a good presentation or that anybody, I mean, we already had that presentation about um, the people who analyze the New York Times bestsellers and fed things in. I mean, that was basically artificial intelligence. They could tell you what had to be in a book to make it a New York Times bestseller, which is not the same as artificial intelligence, but it's the next thing. And they, they knew, I mean, you got to include a dog or some such thing. Uh, artificial intelligence can't write poetry. It, it does not have the human touch. Uh, and so somebody could look at the database and it, artificial intelligence could help you. It's going to help uh, IT people running data centers automatically. It's it's going to be, you know, people have done so many things. Now you just have to look back and see what were the successful ones. But uh, and you can do that. There are many tools for large databases like Oracle database, PostgreSQL database. There are a lot, Oracle has lots and lots of tools for fixing databases. And you don't know about them because they're extremely expensive. 
people pay hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars a year to Oracle. Yeah, you know, John, um, I don't know if you remember that. Uh, I know if Sandy does. We had this uh, database from the Staten Island Day Camp. Remember that, Sandy? Well, John, John's the one that worked on it. I I did, yeah. John and, uh, John Berrien worked on it. Yeah, yeah, that's. Oh, oh, oh John's talking. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. Who knows? Uh, maybe maybe I got to stop share. Let's uh, let's see. Stop share. Let's do that. Okay, now you can see me. Um, but but that was total mess, total mess. The guy who made that for them, he didn't even know what what keys were. He was using last name to join uh, things together, and and of course they had four people with the same last name, and their last name was Cohen, and so it was Cohen one, Cohen two, Cohen three, and Cohen four. <laughs> And that's how they kept it separate. And and they there was a whole bunch for each kid. They had a whole list of activities. There must have been fifty of them, but there was no data with them. It was just blank. There was all this garbage in there. And and they had these repeating columns uh, in that too. It was just a mess. And and I did do an awful lot of work on that, but it was it was very interesting. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. From, I learned a lot from everything I I do on Access. It's amazing. Uh, John, I re I remember you doing it, and you did a lot of meetings with it, and what you did was great. But I think there was some things that you couldn't change. They, oh, well, they, just went, they wouldn't let you change it. They, their problem was is they they wanted me to fix it, but not change anything. <laughs> because the and what the fellow's name was George that brought it to the meeting and and he said that the owners of the camp the day camp um weren't computer savvy and if I changed something they wouldn't know how to handle it and so I had to make it all look the same as best I could but but work you know I took care of the you know there was a bunch of programming in there to make it work and uh, and the fix. Uh, I don't. I don't think they gave up the Cohen one, two, three, and four. Yeah, they did. Oh, they did give it up. Yes. <laughs> what we did, uh, you know, you made the uh, the combo box to find records, and what we wound up doing is put the last name and the address in, uh -huh. and that solved it for them in the same combo box, so they would see name and address together. That was doing, yeah. and that worked. If I got a flat file, if I got a, a comma separated file, and they wanted to turn it into a database, I was thinking in terms of normalization, but I never mentioned the word normalization. My mantra was simply the rules for a database are when in doubt, break it out. Yes, <laughs> so you, have a you have a name field, you can't you call it name. Well, I call it. A dozen different fields: title, first name, middle initial, suffix. You know, boop, boop, address, line one, line two, city, state, zip, all the rest of it. When in doubt, break it out. They yeah. understood that. Try not trying to uh, convey normalization to somebody that's only looked at an Excel file. Yeah, but that that is normal form one. That's first normal form. And then having the, the having the the uh, primary key that's two. Yep. And you know everything for that primary key relates to it. You know, just like everything related to a customer is in one file and has a primary key, whether it be one or two columns or whatever it is. Uh, so and and that's if you think of it that way, you know, I never really thought about normal forms. I just knew that things had to be broken down into things that made sense to be together. And, and the other thing is every piece of data to the, to the extent possible has to only appear once. And then you put it all together with a query. 
right. to build your form or report, whatever. And this is what, when COD invented relational databases, it simplified the databases. It made them so much smaller yes. because everything only appeared once. So they became much faster, much more efficient. That's right. Again, that's the that's the the real world, the IT, the programmer, the developer view of it. If you're dealing with the end user, it was a simple matter of okay, look here in your order table. This person made had three orders, and the way you have it, their name is on three separate lines. But you notice the second line, you misspelled her name. If you yeah. fix it, if you do it the right way. You only have one name entry. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, and, uh, and of course, as you know, in a query like this, the one we just saw, uh, you know, the first order had three lines in it because it was three products, and the name right. appears three times. But that's in a query. But People don't see queries. They see right. the they see the exactly. report, which is grouped by name, order number, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, yep. and so you only see things once and and you know the it may look like in a query like it's there multiple times but it's really only there once right so anyway john john one big attaboy oh, thanks. excellent excellent clear presentation very great